Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about developing a picture of a Lancaster bomber from the Second World War. There's only two left in the world and this one is part of the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight based at RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire, England. The other one I believe is in Canada, so you don't see very many of these. If you're of a certain generation, they're very iconic. This is not my image. The person who took it is also called Lawrence, just coincidentally. And I got talking to him online. He said, what do you think of this? And I thought it's absolutely fantastic. Now, he shot it with a 500 mil prime. Yes, 500 mil prime. So it's as good as it's going to get with a zoom. When I say zoom, it's not a proper zoom, but you get the idea. That's a hell of a long focal length. He said his other settings he wasn't too bothered about because he jumped out of his car to take it. Now, ISO 64, very little noise. F4, very wide open. That means the background's going to sort of melt away. On an overcast day, it's going to be almost white, as you can see. And it gave one one sixtieth of a second shutter speed, which didn't freeze the propellers, which is good. So we got this sense of movement. Now we've done a few develops on this already, but what I'm going to do is create a virtual copy, take it back to the outer camera settings and redevelop it. Now to create a virtual copy, you can go command or control apostrophe. But if you don't know where it is in the menu, come up to the menu, click on help, type in virtual or whatever, and you can see create virtual copy, command or control apostrophe. So I've got a virtual copy. You can see down in the film strip there, the bottom left hand corner is turned up. G for grid, you can see it's turned up there. Notice it's got the copy name, copy one. That's put there by Lightroom every time you do this. I always name up my virtual copies for what I'm going to do with them, basically. Let's say black and white or whatever. For this, it's for video. So I know the reason I created this virtual copy. When you use snapshots, dear my keyboard for the develop module, things are buried away. So I'd, I'm not a massive fan of snapshots because virtual copies show up in the grid. You can't avoid them basically, but do name them up. So I need to reset this back to its out of camera settings. Now notice in history, it hasn't got any history. That's the one problem with the virtual copy. It sort of says, right, you'll create it from this state here, but you won't have your history. So you either carry on developing it or you reset all settings. I'm going to reset all settings. So up to the menu, help, I know the keyboard shortcut, so R-E-S-E-T, let's say, reset all settings, part of settings, shift, command and control, R. So we're basically at the out of camera settings. Now I often crop first, and I think I am on this occasion as well. So R on my keyboard, I happen to be on the golden spiral. O will go through the overlays. So that's the golden spiral, that's standard picture sizes, 16 inch by nine inch, etc. That's the rule of thirds. That's another style of rule of thirds. And that's the golden spiral. Shift and O will cycle through the golden spiral in different parts of the image. I want it in the top right hand corner. This image really doesn't lend itself to a golden spiral, but I'm going to use it on that propeller there, there basically. You need to give this breathing space so it, it has the impression of coming forward. You don't want to crop it too tightly. So I might just move that in a little bit there, maybe there, just a little bit. That will do, I think. Return, so I've done my crop. So to the basic panel, change the profile to Adobe Vivid. That's my choice, because I think this needs a bit of oomph. So it's going to shift the colors slightly. Then I press auto. Then I go back to white balance, and then I could use auto and see what that does. It's put an orange color cast into the background, as you can see. What I might do is try, let's say, cloudy or something. That's not fantastic, slightly blue. Use the white balance tool. You could argue this is almost 10 or 15% gray. Click on it. Well, it's done a reasonable job, but I need to cool it off a bit more, and I'm just going to drag it to the left a little bit. I don't want a warm color cast. So if I go over there, I'm, I'm bringing blue in just around there. Is not too bad. No, back a little bit. That'll do. But I don't really want those whites on minus two and the blacks on minus 38. So I'm going to double click on both to put them back to zero. I'm going to lift up the shadows a little bit. 
Then I'm going to touch exposure. The way I do it is I click in the box and use the up and down arrow keys. If you use the up and down arrow keys, it goes up in, you can see, 10 increments. If you go shift up and down arrow, it goes up in lo much larger amounts. So I'm going to sort of dial that off a bit. I don't think I've got any blown out highlights or shadows because it will show up over there. Now, if I zoom in, uh, what I'm on at the moment, let's go to 8 to 1 and move that over there because I can see what I'm doing. If I zoom in, I'm looking for any blown out highlights. So if I start going up with the exposure, let's say shift and up, but that's far too much. So shift and down arrow, let's bring it down there. Z or Z to come back out to fit on screen. I will get rid of these panels in a minute. I'll show you how I do that quickly. So let's get rid of those panels actually. So shift and tab will lose all panels. So shift and tab going now. Then I need F7 for the left hand side panel and F8 for the right hand side panel. The reason I want this open, I want to see my zoom levels, press Z or Z on your keyboard. I prefer fit to fill. And the reason being on fill, you don't have the magnification symbol you do on fit. That means you can zoom in places like so. Z or Z to come back out again. I'm going to pick four to one for the time being. I will come back to this area in a minute. So what I'm going to do now is turn off the left hand side panel, F7. So here's the image, Z or Z to come back out again. So I'm looking at overall and thinking, can I move the highlights up a little bit more? Am I blowing stuff out a little bit? Shadows. I'm brightening things up, but don't forget there's other tools I could use. I could use clarity and vibrance and saturation to make those colors sat more saturated so they've got more of an edge against the background. So I'm quite liking that. Zoom in. I think that's okay. I, I, I'm quite happy with that. Let's zoom in on that bit there. So now it's all about clarity. So I'm going to zoom in in that area there, and I'm going to put the clarity on 100 so you can see what it does. It's shifted the colors, Z or Z, made it darker. It's all about mid-tone contrast. And I roughly know how, where to put it now because I've used the clarity slider so much. It's one of my favorite sliders. And I reckon around 30 would be about right. So if I turned it off, it just helps the image along. So yeah, I'm going to go for 30, maybe 35. Now vibrance, Z or Z to zoom to fit. Vibrance, I'm going to really go for it because... Where it's saturated already, I don't want any more saturation. That's what vibrance is all about. It lifts the colors that are not that saturated already. So I'm going to put a big amount on, but put a small amount of saturation, around 10. It's looking okay. Let's play around with HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance. You could use color. I prefer HSL. I prefer to be on all. Don't use hue. That's about shifting colors. Use saturation and luminance. And notice... These two tools here, or three as a matter of fact, these are the targeted adjustment tools and are very important. So I'm going to click on that one, change the zoom level, F7, and probably go for two to one and come in with that clicked on. If I click and drag upwards, it's going to move the sliders to the right in the saturation panel. That means it's going to make it more saturated. Click and drag down, it's going to move the sliders to the left. So click and drag up to make it more saturated. Same for that green area there. Same for that orange area there or yellowy area there, that there. Maybe that bit of the blades there as well. Um, I'm going to move the red up by itself because that's for a very small area. Spacebar, drag to this bit here on these red bits. Click and drag up. You can see the red going up more there as well, a bit more there. Try and get that yellow bit carefully. Um, that bit there. And the final one I'm going to do is a luminance change with the targeted adjustment tool. And that's on the undercarriage here around the bottom half of the aircraft. I'm going to click and drag up and you'll see that blue going to the right. So it's lifting everything up, giving it a little bit of a, a sheen almost. Yeah, I think that's all right. Now, if I thought it was over the top, I'd rather come back to the basic panel and drop the vibrance a small amount and maybe the saturation. But as it is, I think it's okay. Let's zoom in. I'm on two to one. I think that's pretty good. Now, re really now, it's about sharpening. And I feel I like ought to explain sharpening because so many people get sharpening wrong. Sharpening's about finding an edge, a luminosity edge. Let's say you've got black on one side and white on the other. That's an extreme. 
What sharpening will do is look at that edge and turn up the contrast. So let's say it wasn't pure black or pure white. It will make it more blacker and whiter on each edge. So you get this impression of sharpening. When I show it to you in a minute, you'll get what I'm talking about. So let's go to the detail panel and I'm going to go for a eight to one zoom. I'll just bring it over there. Then I'm going to press F7 to lose the left hand side panel. The first thing I'm going to do is masking, actually. I should have done this first because this is my preferred way of doing things. Some people say it's down the bottom for a reason, but I prefer to do my masking first. So Z or Z to come back out again. My fault. Alter option key kept press because we're dealing with grayscale here. And you want definitely not the sky to be brought in. So the darker it is, the less likely it is to be sharpened. The whiter or brighter it is, the more likely it is to be sharpened. Now, in fact, to stop what I call artifacting in some parts of the aircraft, I've brought it up quite high to around 45. I might change that in a minute, but basically I'm going to stay with that. Z or Z to go back into that area there. I'm out. Ultra option key kept pressed. We're dealing with luminosity. Now, if you look very carefully with the amount, I am turning up the contrast everywhere. Basically, I'm creating what I call those artifactings, like worm casts. So I'm going to bring it right down to I sort of stop seeing them, which is around 40. Don't forget, masking is really important because I could just make this masking just work on the edges of the plane almost. But I do want the detail and the rivets to show up quite well. So that's why the masking is not very high. It's around 40. I might even bring it down a little bit. Now, radius, once you've got this edge, you can see the edge there. there that's an illuminance border, really. With radius, you're saying you've got your edge but I want to encroach into neighboring pixels. So as you bring the radius up, it's going to encroach into the neighboring pixels and make that border wider. And when I press the Alter Option key and move the radius slider, you'll see what I mean. So Alter Option key, radius. Now, if I take it right up to three, you can see those white borders, I mean, basically taking over the image. As I bring it down, you can see those white borders getting less and less. So I don't want to overdo it, brand 0.8 and 0.9 looks okay. Now detail, if you put it on zero, it will turn off the sharpening almost because detail is about the finer detail. Notice it was on 25 by default. So they're kind of basically giving you a message that you need detail. So I always say that detail can ruin an image completely. And 100 is completely awful. So this is about high frequency sort of detail as well. You know, the texture of the paint almost. So I'm being very careful with it and around 11 or 12 is fine. Now what I would do now is turn off the sharpening. I'm not had a massive effect. I might bring up the amount a tiny amount more and the radius a little bit and maybe bring up the masking and the detail. Um, let's turn that on and off again. Off, on. I've made it better as far as I'm concerned. Slight bit more in the radius. I could click in the box, up arrow, to 1.1 and probably bring that up a little bit more as well. Um, I'm zoomed in a hell of a lot, obviously eight to one, off, on, good. Z or Z to zoom back out again. I think that's looking pretty good. Now I could keep playing around if I thought these colors were oversaturated, I would rather go back to the basic panel and maybe move the vibrance down or something like that because it is a camouflaged aircraft. It's meant to be slightly dull. You don't want it too dull. It doesn't look that good. This is not artistic license. It's just making sure the colors are coming through. I think that looks pretty good. F7, let's go back to one to one and look at this. Do you know something? I'm really happy with that. Now, if I was sharpening for print, I would probably over sharpen this. And that's the thing about print. When you're spraying ink on paper, your edges become diffuse, you know, not as sharp. So you need to over sharpen for print. And that's trial and error. That's difficult skill to sort of have. If you've got your own printer, you'll probably have to waste a bit of ink to get to the point where you understand what's going on. But if you go into a bureau, you might have to, let's say on export from Lightroom, just put the, the sharpening up to high and hope that it looks okay when it comes back from the printer. It's something you've got to be careful of because I say it wastes ink. But I think that looks pretty good. I really love that white background. It's not my image. It's not my image at all. Notice as I mouse around underneath the histogram here, you can see I'm on LAB, lightness A and B. And that's often called lab color, but I can change it, right click here and turn that off and it'd be back to RGB. As I'm going around, it's not pure white, 
It's 95% grey uh, or 95% white, so to speak. So that's okay. So there's a slight colour tint there, very, very slight. The image is popping off the screen. I'm really happy with that. Z or Z to come back out again. As I say, it's not my shot. I can't take the credit. I've just done a bit of post-processing on it. I love this shot. I'm going to probably do a black and white version and probably show you the process of going to print because I, I intend to print this image and what I would do to set the image up with colour profiles, etc, etc. So that you're not wasting your money when it comes back from the printers. That's it, guys. Thanks very much to Lawrence for lending me this image. I will be doing more with this image because the next couple of videos will be about this aircraft again. That's it, guys. Thanks very much.